we're, we're there to provide a service which we hope we feel we do very well. Um, but I know that people can turn around and, and, and say, well, you know, you, you're not showing any emotion. But if I showed any emotion, uh, I wouldn't be doing my job. Um, and if I sat there in tears with the people, uh, it wouldn't be much help to them. I'm not frightened of death. I'm frightened of dying as such according to how I die. If I can continue as I am now, healthy and active, and just drop down dead, it would be ideal, <laughs> absolute ideal. I'm not terribly keen on a service up here. I think at my age, most of my friends are dying off anyway, so there won't be many friends left. And uh, um, you ignore it to a certain extent. You've got to get on with things. I don't go to bed and think, this might be like my last night. Oh dear. Oh. If it is, it is. I'm not going to know the next morning, so... Or I may. You never know. I may be floating around <laughs> somewhere. But, um... Well, whichever way it is, it'll happen. And that's all there is to it. <laughs> I've been to quite a few funerals on, for friends, family over the years, and you start to realise that there's this wonderful tendency in uh, churches, groups, when people come together, that nobody sings. They'll play the hymns, and you'll get a... And we decided that perhaps this was a service that we could offer to people around to help them through this process. Once we've been requested to sing and have gently persuaded that might not be suitable, that probably the most Barcelona, Barcelona, yeah, Freddie Mercury and Montserrat Caballé, because they say, "Oh, it's got an opera singer in it." Yes, it's also got Freddie Mercury in it, and many things Tony and I are. Freddie Mercury, we ain't. There was one where "You Are My Sunshine" was asked to sing, which has a relentlessly jolly accompaniment, which seemed a little jarring when we just said goodbye to this person and everybody sort of skipped out. If you make a mistake, you have to leave it behind. And in a funeral situation, you sort of do the same thing. You leave things behind. And also, when I walk out of the funeral at the end of the, uh, end of the service, that's my job. It's like shutting the office door. This is a piece of stone, or granite, which has to be made correctly. Once it's erected in the cemetery, it becomes a memorial, and then that is when you apply the death side of it. You can't take it on it, take it home with you every night sort of thing, because, you know, you, you, you would, well, you would just be breaking down, I think, so basically you have to keep at a distance. You're concerned, very concerned, but it doesn't, you don't have to dwell on it. It probably um, hits home a little bit that we're only here for a short time in our little lifespans and to get on and do the things you want to do and um, kind of live life really, isn't it? Some people like to sit there and, and tell you, you know, the, the story about how things happened and um, but yes, yeah, so you've you know, as a business point of view, you listen and very compassionate for you know what people have got to say to you. But um, you, you can't be taking home everybody's stories and feelings at the end of the night. 
but equally so uh, you have other things to do during life gardening you know, used to do a bit of dancing and things like that and which then you take it off completely I think people are quite happy in a way once they know they've got a stone after the death side of it people want to get a memorial fixed and then it's sort of finalized as it might be from that point of view people are always very fascinated uh, they, they want to know how long you've been doing it and what's it like to do it and it's a good thing uh, to educate people um, because people want to know but they're often frightened to ask. They go, they go a little bit of, oh really, it's just, um, well there isn't many of this sort of thing around monumental masons really. Um, so that yes, they all say, oh gosh, you know, you see dead bodies all the time. But it's always a, uh, a source of conversation, you know, what happens this, and a lot of people have very weird ideas as to what happens you know, after, I can't think or worry too deeply on things like that, I don't think. I think we've got to look after today and tomorrow will sort itself out. My job is to uh, guide people more than anything. Uh, when, when people come to us and they have a bereavement, uh, they have a, a mixture of emotions. Quite often people are angry. Other times they feel a lot of guilt. Uh, my job is basically just to get them through it. take everything out of their hands and, and show them what, you know, the, the, the way forward uh, to putting their life back on track again.